So after the last video, I was feeling a little demoralised by my failures to design a PCB or solder anything properly. I decided to take two weeks off work to really get in depth with this project again and kickstart a new prototype. This time I'm really happy with the progress I've made and I feel like I'm back on track. I reworked or made changes to pretty much every different part of the hand in this two week block, but to give an overview of the different parts I'm going to cover, I worked on a new main PCB, new forearm design, new wrist, lots of minor design tweaks, resin printing techniques, a finger joint overhaul including PCBs with a cabling system, and programming the hand to work using a leap motion controller and Unity to copy my own hand movements in real time. So after the last video, I decided that I was probably overcomplicating the servo system for the finger joints. I've got some older videos that go into more depth about this design, but the basic principle is that the servos mounted in the forearm each control a single joint in the fingers using a pulley and cord, similar to how tendons drive the fingers from the muscles in the forearm in a real hand. These servos normally have a sensor inside the housing which gives feedback to the control circuit and keeps track of the rotation angle. But in my design, I replaced these internal sensors with my own sensors built into the joints themselves. In this way, my servers get rapid feedback and they can rotate as much as possible to reach their target, whereas normally they'd be restricted to 180 degrees of rotation. Previously, I tried to solder DuPont connectors to both the sensor wires and the control and power wires on the servo so that I could just plug it in directly to a sort of main control board. The amount of effort required to surgically alter the servos in this way was super time consuming and I had a very high failure rate. So this time I kept it simple and simply used wired connections to plug into my board. Whereas previously this board connected everything together including the servo driver boards and Arduino, this time I'm simply using it to connect the servo's internal control board to the potentiometers in the finger joints. I had these PCBs assembled by JLC PCB, so I didn't have to do any soldering at all. This was my first ever board I had assembled by the manufacturer and I found the process very easy and it saved me a lot of time and tedious soldering. To get the servos ready, I had to remove the sensor, solder on my own cables and make sure the gears are free to rotate a full 360 degrees. A funny thing about these Tower Pro MG9ES servos is that there are so many copies out there that you never really know what you're going to get. So every time I get a new batch they're always a little bit different. Previously I've had ones with plastic pins that were very easy to remove, enabling three rotation, but this batch's pins was actually part of the metal gear, just my luck. It was tricky to hold so I ended up using a drill as a pin vise to hold it steady and then using a file to gradually take off that pin. The soldering was much easier than in my last design. I didn't really need to do any desoldering or add any connectors so I was happy to find it went very smoothly and it didn't really do any damage or make any mistakes. Fortunately, the additional wires fit well with the original casing with some minor modifications, so I was able to reassemble the servo nicely. Some of you might recall I did a very in-depth video about wrist design and all the complexities of the human wrist before ending on a relatively simple two-axis cable-driven system. I decided to change things up again because I was not happy about having such a long chain of cable-driven joints, especially when they're still under development. So many parts of this hand are delicate, finicky or experimental at this stage and I don't want to feel like I'm building a house of cards and with the wrist being the very first moving joint in the system it's the most prone to cause further issues down the chain of movement axes. The new design I went with is actually very reminiscent of the wrist design used in a much earlier 2018 prototype. One of the servos is a direct drive and the other uses pulleys with a belt and tensioner. It's nothing spectacular mechanically, but it's simple and robust and a solid base for the rest of the hand. I begun to build up the rest of the hand one subsystem at a time, first the carpo metacarpal mechanism, thumb CMC base and eventually my custom servos in the metacarpo phalangeal joints. I made a number of minor tweaks, mainly improving the ease of assembly by making nuts captive, registration features to align parts and fixing some geometry bugs. In general, there weren't any real issues in this stage of the assembly, but a big roadblock was that I lost the original control boards from the Corona servers I used to make the metacarpal servers, and they wouldn't work with an MG90S board, so I couldn't test them thoroughly. I had to do a ton of resin prints to get all these parts made. I'm still using my Anycubic Photon, which I'd been having mixed results with for a long while, but just recently I dialed in my settings and this time I've had almost zero failures on any of the prints in the last two weeks. I think the main thing was tweaking the exposure time, but I also started using Photon Studio rather than Shitu Box, 
and I think I prefer it. I made some quite drastic changes to the fingers. I made a big deal at the time about switching to resin printing, but I never really adjusted the design of the interphalangeal joints to take advantage of it. With FDM printing, I'll always try to ensure my design has minimal overhangs and a flat base to be in contact with the build plate. This isn't really an issue with resin printing, so I was able to combine lots of different structural components in the finger into a single part. I also simplified the central axle and designed a snap fit system to make assembly way easier. And yes, I should have made this assembly two parts instead of three. I also decided that two bearings per IP joint was too heavy, clunky and expensive. So I switched to nylon shoulder washers. These are pretty low friction for the axle rod and the shoulder also provides a smooth surface for the internal pulleys. In my previous video, I showed a mounting system I designed for the IP joint potentiometer, but this time I redesigned it with a surface mounted wire to board connector that plugs into a tiny and very compact connector system called SUR by GST. It's apparently the world's first 0.8mm pitch wire to board insulation displacement connector. Thanks again to JLC PCB for providing these. The narrow wires are much more flexible and manageable and having a wire to board connector puts a lot less stress on the soldered joints. Unlike my previous design where the wires were soldered directly to the sensors. The board also forms part of the structure of the finger, further reducing part count, complexity and assembly time. I did consider replacing the wired connection system with snap fits, but for now I feel confident with the wired method. I've begun to test the motion of the finger, and to start with the motion was very jerky. This mostly went away after they had a chance to wear in, but I quickly found even more issues. Firstly, my pulleys were sized wrong, which meant that the thread kept unwinding. At least this was an easy fix. I also found that the PTFE tubing had become distorted in some places, and this massively increased the jerkiness because the loss of tension produced backlash. In other words, this meant that when the joint needed to change direction, it firstly needed to overcome the slack in the wire. Overall, I think I'm very happy with the finger design, but I do think the transmission system is problematic. More on that later. With the finger design mostly working, I decided to start looking into using a leap motion controller to control the hand in real time. The initial setup was super easy. After downloading the drivers, it looked like the hand tracking was working great. I did run into some issues with reduced accuracy when I had my overhead lights turned on. So if the lighting's not great in these shots, that's the reason why. I needed to find a way to get the orientation of each finger segment relative to its parent segment in order to get an angle to direct each server to drive to. In the UltraLeaf documentation, I found a convenient method of accessing the orientation of each bone, but the vector output was expressed as relative to the world and not the parent joint, so I had to write a line to fix this. I also smoothed the value to prevent any drastic jerking, which did result in a big delay, as you'll see. At this stage, I'd much rather be safe and prevent damage to the system, but in the future, I'm gonna work on getting it to be more responsive. Getting Unity to communicate with an Arduino over a serial connection should be very simple. I already had a script that I wrote for transmitting three separate variables from one Arduino to another via an XB, but for whatever reason, I couldn't get it to work this time. I had run out of time at this point and it was getting very late, so I decided to just buy a Unity plugin which connected Unity to my Arduino called Uduino. I feel bad for just paying money to fix the problem, but it was actually very easy to use and convenient, and it only cost about $15. The system ended up working quite well, even if there was about a second of delay. I'm a little concerned that the Leap Motion Controller won't have enough resolution to detect some of the more subtle motions of the hand, such as the CMC joint motion in the palm and the many complex motions of the thumb, but at the current stage of development, it's an extremely useful tool. Okay, so let's talk about what I want to change. I think that these MG90S servers are not really good enough for a design so complex, and taking the house of cards analogy from earlier, I want to make sure that the fundamental building blocks, like the servers, are as robust as they possibly can be. Another thing making the finger motion jerky is the fact that this really thin PTFE tubing is actually now the weakest link in the chain, and it's compressing under the pressure from the tendon wire. I'd like to find some thicker tubing, which would improve the compressive strength, but another idea I've had is to replace a small section of the tubing with a spring. This would give me some compliance, meaning I could forcefully bend the fingers out of their target position, and rather than damaging the servos or tubing, the spring would simply compress. Better yet, this means that my hand would have some true grip strength. By having a target grasp position that's smaller and tighter than the object it's actually grabbing, the compression in the spring would translate to useful pressure in the fingers. 
I also need to give some more thought to cable management. I underestimated how much extra slack I'd need for the wrist motion when the hand tilts forwards, so I need to think of a clever solution there too. I also feel that the forearm doesn't live up to the standard of design of the rest of the hand. Functionally it's very fiddly, and the servos are pretty much impossible to replace without affecting surrounding ones. Visually I also think it falls flat. I also need to test my new thumb design, get the MCPs working again, and then I think I'll be getting pretty close. Personally, I can't wait to design the outer casing that's going to tie everything together and disguise some of the cabling and mechanisms. That's all for this video guys. I feel like I'm back into this project now and it's on a positive track. A big thanks to JLC PCB for providing my PCBs and assembly, and an even bigger thanks to my patrons who make it possible for me to keep working on this and all of my other projects. Head over to my Discord channel if you guys want to continue the discussion, and I'll see you all in the next video.